Welcome to Stoppage Time with the Joys and Jump Bucket Simon! Jump Bucket <laughs> Hey Buckets, how you doing, man? Things are a little bit different today. We're gonna do something unique, unusual, but I'm quite looking forward to this. How you doing, buddy? I can tell, man. This is my <laughs> first time. That's that's Nicole, right? Uh, we got a nice little I haven't better be. yet introduced. Yeah, better I haven't be. yet introduced <laughs> this blonde bombshell that's sitting next to me. Yes, this is Nicole, my wife Nicole. She puts so much pressure on me, buckets. She's like, I love this show so I much. Do. I need to be a part of this show. Uh, welcome to the show, Nicole. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for letting me be on. I'm just glad that buckets you fit me in with your massive forehead. Um, <laughs> No, no, no. I'm only joking. What the it's only hell? it's only slightly above average. Buckets. We have Nicole in the show. She's brought the fire early on here. And apparently this is gonna be a longer episode than normal. This is the Joys edition. Oh man. First of all, we need to give a warning then to Eric Gunnerson. If this is gonna be a long show, Eric, we see you in the comments every time. We love you. We appreciate you. Go ahead and fast forward like an hour on this one because we're not gonna get to the bets for a while because now. I learned that Nicole and I are enemies. She's probably Napoli fan for life here, Ian. Oh, so I got to deal with all this shit. There's a chance. There is a chance. She might be Napoli for life. I mean, that is a big possibility right there. Welcome along, everybody. This is episode number 71 of Stoppage Time with Ian Joy and John Buckets. I'm uh, uh, my wife, Nicole, has uh, joined us for this episode. We're going to do a couple of segments. We're going to discuss life in general. We're going to discuss Buckets' life we're gonna basically get into the dark secrets of uh, the people behind the scenes as well you might want to run jay as fast as you can producer jay is already gone there's a j-shaped uh, glass right here he's out the window already <laughs> he's gone now we're gonna get stuck into obviously having my wife on the show uh nicole hot coco your nickname um i guess the first question would have to ask you is I know you're a big fan of the show. And yeah. one of the reasons why I know you're a big fan of the show is because you don't pretty much watch anything else that I do. This is the <laughs> one you religiously watch. Yeah. Why do you like Stoppage Time so much? Well, all I have to say is I came for the entertainment and I stayed for the bets. Ooh. What is it about the bets that you enjoy so much? Because I know, obviously, Buckets, you enjoy listening to Buckets. And uh, obviously, I'm getting better at this one. But yeah. you stayed for the bets. You came for the entertainment. You stayed yeah. for the bets. So what is it about the bets that gets you excited? Uh, I would have to say, you know, before this, I was never really into sports betting. But after this, seeing the success you guys had and watching the games with you, the passion, high-fiving each other. I mean, it's something that's really fun to do together now. Yeah, no shit. And I actually know buckets here that Hot Coco, your favorite league is Major League Soccer. Yeah. Why MLS? I mean, you have a team, obviously. I'm an NYCFC season ticket holder, mm -hmm. as you are, as the kids are. We as a family like to go watch NYCFC. Yeah. But you really like uh, MLS. Yeah. I mean, really like it. I try to get you to watch the Premier League, Bundesliga, all the other stuff that we wager on, but... MLS is your chosen league. Why? Why do you enjoy it so much? I mean, I've been watching it for years, and every Saturday we watch it together, uh, which is fun. And um, I don't know. I just know it a little bit more, and so I really enjoy watching it. I have some connections to a few of the clubs. I'm from Salt Lake City. We lived, and you played for Portland Timbers, and then worked for NYCFC, so I just enjoy the league. I think it's great. Uh, Nicole, you're enjoying this microphone a little too much here. You're actually very comfortable. I know you were nervous as fuck coming on the show here today. How are you feeling now? Good. I mean, I may or may not have had a shot of Grey Goose, but, <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm good. Well, Golden. Don't, don't worry about it. Buckets does that before every show as well. Hey, Buckets, I know um, you sent me a message saying uh, Nicole is coming on the show. I'm extremely excited about this. So I've got about 30 shows. I'm going to try and narrow it, uh, 30 questions. I'm going to try and narrow it down to maybe two or three questions for Nicole. So what's your, your best question here? Give me your best question oh. for Hot Coco, who's on the today. <laughs> so, yeah, Ian, I had a list of about 10 questions, and you've already asked three or four of them. So thank you for making my job a little bit easier. Uh, but as far as the best question that I could possibly ask here, <laughs> Nicole, I want to ask you, uh, potentially I am moving to New York City here soon. Okay. Ian and I are working on that, getting me out there together. Yeah. Uh, so the first and probably the most important question is, do you have any single friends? Ooh, it depends if you like kids or not. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> cool. All right, never mind. Let's move on to the next question. 
Buckus, you're going a little red right there. Oh. Why are you going red, man? Everyone who's watching on the Dude. YouTube, you can see Buckus has immediately gone and blushed. He's gone very red. You, you don't like kids? What's up with you? I, I hate kids so much. I'm not going to feed around the bush on this one. I was not put on this earth to be a father ever. I can... You know, I've got about a hundred nieces and nephews. I want to be the uncle that can just buy them nice shit and call today. But <laughs> no, I am not a I am not a kid kind of guy. Just no chance. That's okay, Buck. It's not everybody is as well. I know a lot of our listeners out there feel the same. So it's okay uh, to hate children. That's fine <laughs> with everybody out there. Just don't hate my kids, okay? Uh, we have three three kids, uh, mm-hmm. two together. I have an older one who's seventeen, and at times she can be a pain in my ass. Just gonna put it out there, but I love her to bits, Maddie. I love you. I know she listens to the show as well. Uh, I actually want to just give Nicole the microphone for a quick minute before we get back into asking more questions about betting, about Major League Soccer. But do you have a question for John Buckets? I'm... Uh-oh. You know what? I do, actually. So Ian and I met a long time ago, coming up to 15 years. Really, Tomorrow. Yeah. Really before... Oh. <laughs> really before, <laughs> like, online dating took off. So he and I love listening to your online dating stories. So my question for you is, what is the weirdest message you've received on Hinge? Whoa. I have, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to parlay this into two stories here. I'm going to tell you the weirdest message and the weirdest experience I've had on Hinge. Perfect. Uh, at, for the first one, as far as the weirdest message is concerned, I you know, want to show my best side here when I'm making these online dating profiles. So I actually had a picture of me and Ian together as one of the pictures. <laughs> And probably the weirdest message I ever got was someone matched with me and instead of hitting on me was hitting on Ian. I got a message that said like, hey, like, I'm sure you're great. Who's your friend, though? Is he single? Is he interested? What's his story? And I said, first of all, he's 30 years older than me. So just be aware of that. Let's let's calm down. Second, he's married with kids. Third of all, you don't stand a chance. So let's just pull back. Talk to me. So that was probably the weirdest message I've had. The weirdest experience. And I don't know if Ian knows this or not. I have actually been catfished on Hinge before. So I've been catfished. I've had people hit on Ian. Uh, <laughs> online dating is not really going great for me so far, Nicole, but we're working on it. That's a crazy story, dude, man. But yeah, please, for the love of God, take my fucking picture off your Hinge <laughs> profile. You got a follow up? Dude, I got so many matches because of you. It was a little, I did have to take it off eventually yes, just because again. I got tired of it. I do have a couple follow up questions here, though. Ian, you mentioned that uh, when you and Nicole met, you were only single whoa, whoa, for six whoa, months there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nicole's got a follow up. Yeah, question. I have a follow up. Oh, you have a follow up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Wait your turn. We'll Ladies get, first. We'll get back to it's you. It's a new show, right? Yeah. Stoppage time with yeah. the joys. Before yeah. then, says John Bucket Timer. Go ahead. Yeah, once you move to New York, then you can ask the first question. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding producer Rob will you hurry the fuck up please <laughs> go ahead no uh follow up question so what is the strangest message you've sent to someone <laughs> see oh, well I'm shit. in my mind can I just tell you like what I'm thinking in my mind it is I yep. think you lead with hi my name's Buckets I have a really big forehead You're attractive to women foreheads no I just like <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just like, yeah. I just love that so much that it was in the reviews. All right, before Buckets answers, do you think Buckets has got a massive forehead? No, it's only slightly above average. Slightly above average forehead. And okay. to be honest, I think it's similar to yours. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah. I mean, I have a receding hairline, so that doesn't necessarily mean my forehead. That's actually the top of my head. You can see it <laughs> above there. Uh, Buckets, I'll let you answer that question. What is the weirdest uh, question or statement you've put out there on your dating profiles? I'm pretty vanilla for the most part. I don't have anything exciting or crazy that I message. I do always check fan confirmation. So whenever somebody says like, oh, I'm a soccer fan too, I always see who they support. And I have unmatched people based on their answers <laughs> to that question. So there's definitely a right answer there. I had one girl tell me that she's a Dortmund fan. And I was like, ah, oh, well, good luck. And then blocked her and moved on. So, <laughs> Dude, uh, there's a, a reason why you're still single yeah because i'm just yep, gonna put yep. it out there uh maybe you need to take that <laughs> off your dating apps there all right cool let's get back into it because okay. obviously this is a show that we enjoy we want to entertain our people we yeah. love doing it you enjoy listening to it so we want to make sure everybody out there gets their fix including our good friend eric gunnarsson who's <laughs> desperate for us to get to our bets yep. um but you have been getting into making bets recently i've noticed mm-hmm. because at times i will see you aggressively typing in your phone parlays and things like that yeah. so you know there's there's girls out there who are listening to our show there's obviously girls out there and females in particular that we'd like to get more into the betting space so why do you enjoy placing a wager i mean it's a general question i'm just curious uh, i mean it makes the game more interesting obviously uh, you can have an opinion about it but when you 
put a unit size behind it, you know, you know, my unit size is smaller than other people just getting started out. Uh, no, but it makes it more interesting. I mean, it's fun and it's fun. It's something we can do together. Yeah. You know, we stay up late, we high five each other and it's fun. Uh, let's discuss <laughs> about the females a little bit more because we do okay. have Ariel here. You've met Ariel. Yep. She's fantastic. Uh, obviously in the media, she's a big presence and big personality. How do we get more girls, females involved in betting? Like, How do you think we could entice people to listen to our show more? And how do you think that maybe we could try and entice more girls to actually enjoy betting because it took you a minute before you placed that first wager and started to get into it well you know what you had me at is uh do you want to split the profits yeah and <laughs> done and we did have, signed up we did have a couple of nice uh, hits there that <laughs> you managed all. to take a little yeah. wedge of uh, cash away from so <laughs> i did notice that and before buckets you get back into some of your questions which i know you have for nicole um i want to mention that we had a massive hit this weekend buckets you know about this because i sent it to you and we both had this big hit this weekend um what we decided to do you want to explain it we did a parlay this weekend yeah. i said to you what you said you pick a team i pick a team uh, we did two teams, each. two teams each. I went first. Yep. So the team I chose first was MLS because that's what I know. I'll tell you right so now. Much. We had New England Revolution, Montreal, <laughs> Orlando, right. and Houston. You chose? New England and Orlando. Orlando, yeah. yeah. Which were, were obviously big ones. And then Houston were plus 200, which I yeah. threw into the parlay and was, was proceeding to shit myself thinking, I'm going to fuck this parlay up. Uh, they were playing LAFC. They, of course, went on to win by four goals to nil against LAFC. And uh, we hit, believe it or not, everybody out there, including John Buck, it's a hammer, a plus 1,600 and one parlay, which I proceeded to have to break out the wallet and uh, cut a little share in for you. Yeah. <laughs> How did that make you feel, hitting a plus 1,600 parlay? That was our Amazing. biggest ever hit. Amazing. The biggest hit I've hit on my own is a plus 300, which I was really proud of myself, got no advice from Ian. Uh, but to hit this kind of number was pretty special, especially to know that like I contributed. That was fun. You do, and you do yeah. a great job with it as well. I appreciate you enjoy it. Obviously, we do have a lot of fun watching Major League Soccer together. We support NYCFC, and we can enjoy Major League Soccer betting and having fun with it as well. So, Buckets, I know you are so desperate to ask more questions. <laughs> We've got Hot Coco here. She's on the Take it away, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a, a couple questions for you, hot hot cocoa, yeah. if that's okay for yes. me to say that. Yeah. Careful. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I know that I know that two questions in particular. I'll start with the first one. I know that Ian has told me before, kind of how you guys met. Uh, you met yeah. while he was still in his professional career. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, what is it like dating a professional footballer? What was that like traveling or or being with Ian during that time? I've opened up a fucking dangerous door here. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I feel like it was different than probably most experiences because Ian's a one-off and it, you know, it was fun. You know, it's nice. I trust him. So the fact that he traveled so much was never an issue. And, um, you know, I was always proud to see him and watch him play. It was really cool. And yeah, it was pretty, it was nice. She's a little younger than me, Buckets, as well. Yeah, so slightly. she was um, enjoying those, you know, the, the sweets and uh, free coming food. to get free food yeah. and fucking free t-shirts and shit. <laughs> yeah. She was yeah. like, yeah, you know, can I get a free free something here before we leave the stadium? <laughs> Go ahead, Buckets. <laughs> All right, and on to uh, the last question I have and probably my favorite question here. And I do want to get a little bit personal, so just let me know if I'm crossing oh, shit. any lines. But you've mentioned... The answer is no, stoppage. Buckets, all right? I'm just going to fucking say it right now. <laughs> Damn ahead. it. All right. Well, no questions. No, no, no. no, no, no. So you, you you mentioned that MLS is your favorite league and you've mentioned yeah. that stoppage time is your favorite project that Ian's done. It's the yes. one that you always listen to and you're hanging out with him during. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, how did you feel when Ian, your wonderful husband and my wonderful co-host, yeah. turned down a rather large job with a company that I won't say names, uh -huh. but covers MLS and possibly sells iPhones as well <laughs> to focus on building stoppage time with points bet and with me? How'd you feel when he uh, turned that down? I was really proud. You know, it takes a lot for someone to believe in a project and a team and themselves so much to turn down something like that. Uh, it just goes to show like the passion behind it and 100% supportive, super proud of him. And clearly it's paying off because you guys have a great show. 
It's fun. Where do you? I mean, that's a great question, Buckets. Thanks that for asking that. Question. Very, very personal question. And now it's out there. Obviously, people will get to know exactly what we're doing here at Stoppage Time with Points Bet. But like, where do you think we can potentially go with the show? Because you know how much I love it. I've been talking about doing a project like this for many, many years. So, do you think we have a real possibility of growing something special here, or are we fucking wasting our time? <laughs> Totally. It's a great show. Super entertaining. Feel like you have it all. You have the bets. You know what you're talking about. You have the entertainment. Uh, I think it's only going to keep getting bigger for you guys. Fucking hell. Buckets, can we give a golf clap here for Hot Coco here? Who's on does that make up for all the mean comments well. I said before, Buckets? That that does. Yeah, okay, no, we're, we're good. You're okay. good in my book. Okay, now. okay, okay. Hey, before you go, this is, of course, uh, um, a show that we dedicate to our one follower, Eric Gunnarsson, who wants us all to shut the fuck up and provide bets. So do you have a best bet for Eric Gunnarsson out there? I do. I actually do. <laughs> it's an MLS bet, believe it or not. Uh, I did notice there weren't as many games yep. this weekend. International week, yep. Yeah. So, you know, slimmer picking. So it's Major League but, Soccer. Yeah, Major League Soccer. Let's go. Sorry. Uh, so it's a parlay because buckets. I know you are a huge fan of parlays. <laughs> it's a twenty-five game parlay. Oh, um, <laughs> oh no, no, no! Sorry, that was another one. Okay, so it's a three-leg parlay. Uh, I have San Jose versus Portland uh, at San Jose. Double chance. Uh, I chose this because San Jose have not lost at home all season. Well, nice. Portland, they've only won one game away, and they've lost five games away. Nice. Uh, second game, I have New England Revolution versus Orlando. I have New England double chance. Uh, New England super strong at home. And the last time they played each other was on February 18th in Orlando, and New England won two to one. Then I have Nashville SC versus St. Louis SC. Oh, it was a good game. Uh, Great game. Nashville double chance. Um, they have only lost once at home, and that was back on March 25th against Cincinnati, who's a super strong side. Yep. And uh, St. Louis haven't won away from home since the same day, March 25th, against Real Salt Lake. And the uh, odds are minus 116. On points, but. On points, but. Wow. <laughs> and I had no help. Ian wouldn't let me even tell him, probably nope. because he was scared that he might steal some of my ideas, I'm guessing. But well, I can tell you right now, there's probably a thousand people out there watching the show who's going to steal your idea, whether <laughs> you like it or not. So thank <laughs> no, you please. for providing that. Uh, listen, I know you're my wife, but um, I do want to say happy anniversary to you. It is tomorrow, obviously, the first day we met. It was a long time ago. I'm not going to mention how many years because we're old as fuck now, or at least I am. Uh, but I am very proud of you, and thank you for your support and helping me, obviously, make a decision to jump on the back of this project with Points Bet and grow the show to where it's at right now. Um, without your support, I wouldn't be in the position I am, and thank you for doing so. But also thank you for inspiring a lot of people out there now to um, to bet and to have fun, especially yeah. females, because it makes a big difference. People are out there watching, and I'm sure people out there listening, um, they're also desperately going to find the YouTube to see what the fuck you look like, because <laughs> a lot of people out there who are on the podcast format are like, God damn, this voice is unbelievable. What the fuck does she <laughs> look like? Oh, and wow. then when they see you, they're like, oh my God, it's better than I thought. Um, but no, really, you're going to inspire a lot of people out there, and people are going to jump on the back of your bet as well. So thank you for coming on. Uh, how was it? How was the experience? It was fun. Thank you for having me. Also, happy early Father's Day. Oh, yeah. to buckets uh, as well. Uh, well, better not be. No. Yeah. <laughs> not that I know That'd of. Be at least. awkward. Uh, but also, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there as well. So, thank you for having me. This was super fun, and uh, maybe I'll come back again. Do you want to come back? Do you like it? I don't know. I mean, I like it. We'll see how it goes. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll leave it for the viewers oh, and gosh. the listeners to make this decision <laughs> if Nicole Hot Coco should come back on the show. So everybody out there, uh, this is my wife, Nicole. Um, she is obviously a big support system for me. She is the love of my life. And um, if you think she should come back on to make more fun of John Buckets, I must forehead, then please let us know. Buckets, uh, do you want to say goodbye to Nicole before she leaves? I do. Nicole, thank you so much for coming on. And to people that do decide whether or not they want her to come back on, Eric, if that bet hits, you have to say that you want Nicole to come back on there because <laughs> she is providing some very valuable insight. I think she probably knows more about MLS than I do. So that's, that's impressive. Nicole, it was great meeting you. 
thank you for answering the questions and happy anniversary to you and uh, Ian there. Thanks love so it. much. All Good right, love it. Well. Let's uh, let's get ready because we got a, a big show coming up after the break, Buckets. Uh, we're going to obviously go through what we just witnessed yesterday in UEFA Nations League. Um, and then we're also going to discuss some of the latest news before providing some best bets and picks for the weekend because there are some cracking games to look forward to. So oh, yeah. don't go anywhere. You are listening and watching Stoppage Time. Hot cocoa. Checking out. Welcome back in the stoppage time. IPJ in the bucket, man. John Imer. That was hot cocoa, everybody. John Buckets Imer. My wife on the show. Never did I ever think I would see the day, but she is <laughs> on the show. She was on the show. Um, that was a lot of fun for me. What'd you think? Dude, I loved it. We've had uh, Mama Joy on the show and now Mrs. Joy on the show. So we're just getting the whole... Uh... IPJ family on here eventually, it looks like. Wait till I get the kids on. They'll fucking tear this place down, man, at some point. My boy Harvey's going to just destroy this place. He's going to be like, so jerseys, balls, let me kick this fucking soccer ball. All right, let's get into it. We obviously are on episode number 71 of Stoppage Time. Thank you to everybody out there for listening to the show. Uh, Buckets, we got to just talk about what happened in the UEFA Nations League game between the Netherlands and Croatia. It was 2-2 after 90 minutes. Minutes. Uh, we did see goals from Daniel Malin. Kramanic equalized with a penalty before Pasalic made it 2-1 to Croatia. And we thought it was going to end 2-1 to Croatia before eventually what happened, Noah Lang, in the 90 plus 6 minute, hit an absolute banger into the top corner to take the game to extra time, where Croatia won by two goals to nil, taking the average and aggregate score to 4-2. Petkovic and Luka Modric uh, scoring the goals to make it 4-2. Buckets, uh... I have a feeling this one kind of hurt you because there was a lot of goals in there. This was a painful one, man. My best bet was the most boring parlay ever, which included three Nations League games all going under three and a half goals. And when this was 1-0 at halftime, Ian, I got to be honest, I already had a text drafted to you because I know you were on the over here. The text said, Ian, I'm so sorry that you missed your bet, but at least I made mine. Like, you know, better man wins. You'll get him next time there, kiddo. And then I watched three goals in the second half happen, including... One happening in the 90 plus sixth minute of extra time to bury my bet. I had a bit of a bad day yesterday, Ian. Well, I'm really sorry that you had a bad day yesterday because we did discuss this yesterday on our show, um, on show number 70, that I was going to go for the over. I was looking at over two and a half total goals in the game. I was leaning towards the Netherlands winning the game, um, but I also mentioned there's a possibility that Croatia could win the game by two goals to one. Had the game finished by two goals to one, we would have been in a unique situation. I would have hit my over you would have hit your under onto the next game we go. And there was a lot of people out there who were tailing our bets saying, let's not get any more fucking goals. <laughs> I did obviously end the cold streak. I did hit this bet. It was over two and a half total goals in the game, plus 116 on points bet. Super happy that I'm finally back in the win column buckets after a horror show that I call the Champions League final for me. Um, but this was uh, an interesting game. I just want to point out Luka Modric. This guy mm. is unbelievable. He's a machine. I went and had a look at his stats. I've got them for you, Buckets. You want to hear? Let's hear him. He won 100% of his aerial duels. Guy's like five foot three, man. How the fuck did he win every single aerial <laughs> duel? Uh, 119 touches, 14 touches in the final third, 14 final third passes, 11 ball recoveries, 10 duels won, seven accurate long balls, four fouls won, three tackles, two chances created, one penalty won, he scored a goal, and he also had an assist. This guy just finished a season where he played over 50 games for Real Madrid. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he's 36 or 37. He is a machine. It looks like he's signing on for another season. He's not going to Saudi Arabia. He wants to stay at Real Madrid. He's still playing at the highest of high levels. What an absolute genius of a footballer. Dude, he's aging like fine wine. The older he gets, I swear, the better he's getting. Like The accuracy that he has in his long passes is tremendous. He can set anyone up from anywhere on the pitch. And he's making an impact regardless of his age in season in and season out. I think he's going to have another great year at Real Madrid too. You know, he's not done. Yeah, we got more to come about Real Madrid and additions coming to their squad as well uh, a little bit later on in the show. I do have another bet that's coming up. It is, of course, uh, the USA against Mexico. Uh, we can't discuss that because as we record the show, the game is coming up tonight. Um, I do have uh, USA draw no bet. It's minus 135 on points bet. A little bit of a safety net with me with the draw no bet. Buckets, you also had a, a second bet yesterday. Uh, didn't go so well for you? It did not go well. But real quick, I want to point out that you have tremendous CLV on that USA bet. 
We got it at minus 135 yesterday. I'm seeing it as high as minus 165 on points bet now. So I'm liking the direction we're going there, but I'm just using this as a chance to distract people from the fact that I went 0 and 2. I was on LAFC <laughs> versus Houston Dynamo. Both teams to score in that match. And when Houston Dynamo scored first, the live odds on points bet were minus 600 for both teams to score in that game. They did not both score in that game as LAFC had their fourth game in a row, Ian, without a goal. And I'll be honest, something that I did forget just a little bit and that I need to be looking into is call-ups for international duty because LAFC was missing three or four of their starting 11, yep. I believe, to international duty. Yep. Yeah. Cold streak for me, but I'm excited to bounce back today. Hey, listen, this is also the importance of our show because I did make fun of you when you provided this bet on episode number 70 that... Houston were poor on the road. They haven't scored many goals. They'd never won a game. They'd drawn two games. That was it. But I actually said that I was going to back you up here. It looked like it was going to be a favorable bet. I was going to back you up with your bet. I was going to tail it. But I actually mentioned, I went back to just make sure I did do so, but I mentioned on there that I don't know if LAFC can beat Houston. And Houston have sort of turned a corner. They beat Chicago in the Open Cup. They then smashed LAFC at home four goals to nil at the weekend. And then they go and win one nil. LAFC had 71% possession of the ball last night, Buckets, and they only had one shot on target. And that tells you that the quality players who were missing, including Buanga um, on international duty, were going to be costly indeed. Never mind, though. We move on. Buckets, let's discuss some uh, news that's uh, been breaking recently. We obviously know who has been in the headlines. And I want to go back to something that we've been talking about a lot, and that is Kylian Mbappe. The great, the legendary Fabrizio Romano coming out today saying that Kylian Mbappe had made comments, and this was his comment. At the moment, I've only one option, and that is staying at Paris Saint-Germain. I plan to be there when the season <laughs> starts. Now, a little story behind for those who are just catching up. Uh, Kylian Mbappe has one year left on his contract. It expires in 2024. He has stated that he doesn't want to accept the option year, which would take it to 2025, meaning he could leave on a free transfer at the end of the season 2024, so next summer. So... PSG, their stance is saying, no, we want to sell you because we can get some money for you because if they allow him to play one more year, he's leaving on a free transfer. Kylian Mbappe saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying at PSG. PSG are saying, no, you're fucking not. You're getting the fuck out of here and we're going to take some money. So what do you do in this situation? This tells you how crazy it is. Buckets, your thoughts on this because this is a wild situation to be in. It's wild and it's just getting messier day in and day out. Every time I see a new tweet about this, I'm a little bit more shocked. But it's something that we touched upon on our last show on episode 70, Ian, and that is that Players have more power than people are realizing. What Kylian Mbappe is essentially doing here is holding this team hostage. If he doesn't want to leave, he doesn't have to leave, correct? They can say that you're going to go, we're going to sell you into this. He could refuse and just stay because he still has another year in his contract. Yep. So ultimately, he has a say in whether he goes or stays. And it sounds like whether you want to say it's petty or it's whatever, like he's going to force PSG to stay another year. Yeah. That's what I'm leaning towards. It's wild, but I don't think it happens. I mean, come no. on, let's be honest. This is all mind games. This is business as well. He's worth over 100 plus million right now, even with one year left of his contract. And they gave him an open checkbook. They basically said, what's the price going to take you to sign this extension? But remember, I mentioned to you about this is going to be something that changes the game completely. You're going to see clubs now locking in their superstars for six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-year contracts. And that means the players get paid guaranteed money for that length and durity of the contract. Whereas now, Kylian Mbappe, one year left, probably the best player in the world right now as we speak, He's going to go for a cut price because they have to sell him. They're going to be forced to sell him. He's come out yesterday and said, I'm not going to Real Madrid. Real Madrid, no contact. I'm not discussing uh, Real Madrid. I'm staying at PSG for one more year. I mean, this is an unusual situation for Paris Saint-Germain to find themselves in. I find it strange. It's unique. It's different. But watch this space because this is not the end of what's happening right now. Mbappe is forcing that he wants to stay for one more year so he can go on the free. Don't think so. I think he's actually forcing a move out of the club right now and forcing the club to sell him right now. Real Madrid must be licking their lips. I mean, Real Madrid has to be the destination, right? It has to be. And I am so sad because Real Madrid are going to be a powerhouse now. They oh, yeah. picked up Bellingham already. That's signed and been announced. They're potentially going to pick it up Kylian Mbappe. That is a team that is just building a dynasty and they're going to be bouncing back aggressively 
in Europe in the next couple of years. Yeah, that's a great shot there. I'm going to get producer Matt to get the stats for me right now. Uh, producer Matt, question for you while we go on with the show. What are the odds for Real Madrid on the futures to win the Champions League next oh. year? Let me know my year before we finish the show. Um, so let's discuss Lionel Messi real quickly. He, did, he was in action today, uh, of course, as we record this on Thursday. Argentina beat Australia by two goals to nil. Uh, Messi scored two minutes into the game. And... Um, he was dancing around the field early on in this game, John Bucket Zimmer. Messi was moving like Patrick Swayze in Dirty Dancing. He was fucking delightful to watch. He was absolutely delicious. I mean, Patrick Swayze in Dirty Dancing is a good-looking man. Lionel Messi, when he's on the field, dancing with a ball, is a sexy motherfucker. Uh, and don't even pretend like you know who Patrick Swayze is. You don't know? No comment. No comment. You know, oh my God, Buckets, we got to teach you some history, man. We got to teach you some history. Do you know what Dirty Dancing is? I like, like grinding. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, like strip clubs. What? <laughs> you got to stop saying that shit, man. Producer Jay's Jay, gone, Jay's I know. like just dripping in his seat here. Hey, listen, no, it, Dirty Dancing was a historic movie. It's an old school movie. Go watch it, 80s. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I know it was before your time, but Patrick Swayze, just go look at him. What a good looking man. Messi dancing around on the ball. And one of the messages you sent me, I think it was producer Rob who sent this message in the group chat. And what is Messi going to do to Chicago Fire when he's out there on the field <laughs> if he can do this to Australia national team? I saw that tweet by points bet and I quote tweeted it and said, I can't wait to bet Messi anytime goal scorer at minus 1400 every single game next season. I mean, it's just, he's kind of showing what we already knew, but he can kind of do this by himself. We saw him taking down or taking on five, six, seven Australian defenders and just cut through them like they were butter. Ian, it is going to be incredible seeing him in the MLS, but it just shows that, you know, he's not past his prime. He is going to have a field day in the MLS every single week next year. Yeah, no doubt he's going to have a field day. Lionel Messi is Lionel Messi. He likes to score goals. He got man of the match in the game today. He's still 35 years old, so he's got a lot to offer. But Lionel Messi, even at age 35, Buckets, can still create history. And today he broke another personal record. Do you know what that record is? I do not. Lionel Messi's goal for Argentina against Australia was scored in one minute and 19 seconds. It was the fastest in his entire career as a professional footballer. I mean, even at 35, he is still breaking fucking records, man. What an absolute genius of a guy. Um, incredible. And watch the space with Lionel Messi, obviously. Still waiting for that contract to be signed. Um, but yeah, we, we have an update, Buckets, real quickly before we move on to discuss a little bit of Real Madrid. Plus 900. Producer Ed jumping in here. Producer Matt saying in my ear. But Ed jumping in saying plus 900 for Real Madrid on points bet. Futures for Champions League. Your thoughts right there. Let's go ahead and make that an official half unit play here, Ian. I've got, I'm going to sprinkle that as soon as the show is done. I'm going to play that. And I'm probably going to check what Manchester City is too and just play those two teams because I don't know if anybody's coming near them in the Champions League next year. I'm going to guess City's probably plus 200 right now. I'm going to guess that. Um, I'd guess around that. But I would say so. Yeah, producer Ed, give me the thumbs up and saying yes. Um, also, let's get into Real Madrid because they had breaking news today. They announced the signing of Jude Bellingham. Uh, Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid, his comments were awesome. One of the best players in the world joins us today. Jude is here because he won. It. He could have gone to any other club as many wanted him, but he chose to be at Real Madrid. So welcome and thank you for your ambition. Bellingham went on to make some comments as well, which I thought were absolutely fantastic. Listen to this, Bucket. Of course, all of my friends of England national team wanted me back in the Premier League. It was the easier option for me in a comfort zone, but you just can't turn down the, the big and the greatest Real Madrid. Love that comment. He went on to say, I was sold when Real Madrid came to my house to meet us. It was a huge compliment because they were great with my family. They didn't try to manipulate them. It was a great moment. Goosebumps. You dream of moments like that as a kid. He's still a fucking kid, man. It's unbelievable. And then he went on, Buckets, and I want your comments on this as well, to talk about Kylian Mbappe. One of the reporters asked a question. Would you like to share the pitch with Kylian Mbappe at Real Madrid? Jude Bellingham answered, who wouldn't? Wow! First and foremost, 100 million, Jude Bellingham, what a signing. What an addition for Real Madrid. What a move for Jude Bellingham. Phenomenal footballer, such a talented kid, going where he wants to play. He went from the championship in England with Birmingham 
to the Bundesliga, which is the league that creates stars. He's a young English international player, and he had the balls to say, you know what, I'm not going to follow the trend and go, go to the Prem. I'm going to go to the Bundesliga and become a star. Played in the Champions League, almost won a Bundesliga title, and at such a young age now gets an unreal move to Real Madrid. This is great news all around, Buckets. This is great news for Jude Bellingham. It's great news for football as a whole. Because I love how he said, I'm going to play for the greatest country in the world, and it's not about the money. You know that the pressure was immense on him to play for an England team. He plays for the England national team. The assumption was, yeah, it's in your comfort zone. You'll come play for an EPL squad. You'll end up being a backup on Manchester City or something like that. And he said, no, I'm going to carve my own path, and I'm going to do what I believe is right. And we saw that when he played in the Bundesliga. And now we're going to see it when he plays for Real Madrid and when he does play for the biggest club on earth. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for his future. I'm also keeping a little bit of an eye on his little brother as well, who's yep. playing in the championship, sure. I believe. So it's just, it's it's a tremendous move all around. I'm a little bit bummed just because Real Madrid is going to be that much better for that many more years now. But I'm very happy and I'm very proud of this move for Bellingham. Yeah, you mark my words. Jude Bellingham is going to be an absolute baller at Real Madrid. And you recognize that Luka Modric, Tony Kroos, who both signed extensions to their contracts, it looked like Kroos is going to finish his deal shortly. Um, in the addition to what they already have at the club, I mean, oh my God, Chomeni, Kamavinga. I mean, I, the names could go on and on. Obviously, I recognize that. But th- just throwing Bellingham into that mix, their midfield is stacked for fucking 10 years. I yeah. think he could be potentially one of the best English midfielders of all time. And, and my most recent years would take me to Beckham, would take me to, obviously, Steven Gerrard, um, people like that who played in that midfield. Frank Lampard. I think Bellingham's going to be better than all of them, just throwing it out there. Um, other news that broke uh, yesterday, Manchester United have submitted a bid, an opening bid for Mason Mount, Chelsea player Mason Mount. The opening bid was about £40 million. And some statistics to back this up here since the start of 2017-18, Mason Mount is the only Chelsea player to score 20-plus goals and provide 20 plus assists in the Premier League. He has 27 goals, 22 assists. And here is another stat. Most Premier League goals scored for Chelsea since 2017-18. <laughs> Eden Hazard is the only player to have done more than Mason Mount. He has 28. 28 goals. He left the club in 2019. Nobody's scoring goals for Chelsea, apparently. This is absolutely wild. What do you think about that one, Mason Mount, potentially going to Manchester United? I think it's a good move just to get out of Chelsea at this point. Sorry to the Chelsea listeners, the Chelsea fans out there, but this is a team that historically does not do well with bringing in striking talent, and they're a team that desperately needs to find striking talent. Chelsea's also doing a bit of a a reorganization for the top down here. It looks like they're going to end up getting rid of 10, 11, 12 players. They're really trying to figure out what they're going to do with all these new players and all these new signings. Chelsea's one of the few clubs that I personally would not want to be at right now. So I think it's a good move for Mount. I agree with you. Another name that's been linked to obviously leaving the club is Kai Havertz. Sources are saying that Chelsea could be flexible about the price tag after an initial £75 million request considered to be too high by Arsenal. So Arsenal trying to potentially get Kai Havertz to the club. That would be a big difference. Now, I did promise you, John Bucketheimer, in our, perfect, our personal chat here that we would discuss Bayern Munich. Are you ready? Yep. Nervously. Get excited, but not okay. too excited. I'm going to start with a negative first. Understand that PSG will try to find a solution for both Lavin Kurzawa and Juan Bernat. The next step will be opening bids for Lucas Hernandez. Bayern yeah. Munich are aware of Lucas's priority to join PSG this summer, but are still waiting to discuss the conditions of this deal. Lucas Hernandez, obviously a terrific player. Um, they have a couple of uh, fullbacks coming into the club. Uh, Rafa Guerrero's coming in from Borussia Dortmund on a free transfer. They also have Alfonso Davies. So Lucas Hernandez, French international, looks like he could be on his way to PSG from Bayern Buckets. Yeah, and he has not been very shy about his desire to go to PSG. As much as I'd love for him to stay at Bayern Munich, the last thing I want is a player stuck at our club and not wanting to be there. So if his goal is to end at PSG, it's unfortunate, but we're going to be able to fill that spot. All right, good news before we move on to our favorite segment uh, brought to you by Eric Gunnarsson. Bayern Munich look like the favorites for now for Kim Min Jae. Manchester United and Newcastle are still in the race, but Bayern Munich have a concrete chance. Kim has released clause in his contract that is active in July, so it's all about convincing the player. Kim Min-jae, the centre-back from Napoli, potentially on his move to Bayern Munich, 
this would be a fabulous fit, I think, for Bayern Munich. They struggle defensively. They need consistency. Kim and Jay, one of the best centre backs, absolutely looking to take the next step in his career. Um, obviously done well with Napoli, just won the Scudetto, but now looking to take that next step. Doesn't look like it's going to be to the Premier League. Bayern Munich, that's not a bad move, and what a great addition he would be to the club. That would be huge. And Kim and Jay is one of those guys that I really wasn't on my radar until you brought up his success in the Champions League, Ian. And this is a guy that you and I have touted for weeks now, talking about how successful he was in Serie A, how successful he was with Napoli. And he's going to be a very strong... I haven't heard any rumors about Bayern Munich, so that's tremendous. I would love to have him at our club. He would be massive in that starting eleven. I can definitely see that potentially working for Bayern Munich and Kim and Jay. I think it would be a great move, but... If he has a release clause, it's going to be an interesting price tag. I'm really intrigued to see where this goes because no way anybody expected him to be the player that he is right now. This is a phenomenal footballer. He obviously opens up a great deal of marketing, which Bayern Munich are very heavy into across the world, right? This is an easily marketable player. He brings fans right. to your club. So I'd love to see that type of move. Buckets, you ready to move on? Let's move on. Who are we moving on for? Let's just start the Eric Gunnarsson section now. We might need to rename this part of the show for him, right? Fuck, dude, we got to get this guy on the show, man. He he dropped in a comment. He lo- There's no way he doesn't love listening to his name on our show, by the way. Like, he's <laughs> almost like producer Jay. Jay just gets really excited, a little bit too excited for my liking when we mention his name there. Um, but we got to move on because there's so much to talk about before we finish out the show. Me and Buckets are excited to provide a few bets here. Buckets, are you ready for the weekend's action? Yes, absolutely, man. It's been a slow couple days here, but we've got a lot of big games on the weekend, so I'm good to jump right into it. All right, UEFA Nations League, we have the final games, third place plus the final. Uh, Netherlands, obviously, out of the competition, but still playing for that third place. Croatia, we'll find out who they're going to play on later on today. Spain against Italy from the other semi-final. By the time the show goes out, the final will be set. Six matches on Saturday in Major League Soccer, including NYCFC against Columbus Crew. Myself, Hot Coco, and the family will be at that game as season tickets holders. We're expecting NYCFC to pull the finger out their ass and finally get a fucking win. Nashville against St. Louis is another great game to look forward to. Also a part of Hot Coco's parlay. If you didn't hear that, go check it out early on in the show. We also have UEFA Euro qualifiers, John Bucketsheimer. Oh yes, a lot of these games are already on to match day three. Some are on match day two. But 2024 Euro qualifiers for the European Championship with 2024 taking place in... Buckus, you know where it's playing? It's in Germany. It is in Germany. Should we go? We should go. We should go. Dude, we should go. All right, let's just put it out there right now. (laughs) Producer Rob, we fucking love you. We apologize for all the shit we've said about you and for those people sliding into your DMs. We're really, really sorry. But if you could make it happen that me and Buckets, myself in business class, Buckets in economy, can get to Germany with tickets to go watch and provide picks from Germany, could we please make that happen? Producer Rob, we would love to hear an answer from you at some point um, this week. Thank you very much. To everybody out there, please drop into Producer Rob's DMs and ask him <laughs> if we can go to Germany. <laughs> Buckets, let's crack on. I want two best bets from you. You can go anywhere you want. There's a lot to choose from. I want you to get fucking crazy with your bonkers bet as well. So two best bets plus a bonkers from a challenge. A new country. Are you ready for it? A oh, yeah. new I'm country. Ready. Really? You're ready for it? Oh, yeah. Uh, You're not going to know what these teams are from, where they are. If they're on this planet, it's going to be great. Fucking hell. All right, let's start with your best bet number one, please. My best bet. And, Ian, I'm getting a little bit of nostalgia here because this is how we got started, was betting on international matches for the World Cup, and now we're back doing it for the Euro qualifiers. So it just feels good to talk about these games. And I'm going to start off by going to a game that should have absolute fireworks, a banger of a matchup between the World Cup Cup runners-up France taking on Gibraltar. And this is one of those games where the lines are insane. The over-under for this match is set to five and a half goals for this game, as France, who are currently ranked fourth in the FIFA rankings for the world, out of 211 teams, are taking on Gibraltar, who is ranked 204th out of 211 clubs. (laughs) This is a bit of a tricky one to bet, because if we're being completely honest, if France put out their best starting 11 and played as hard as they could for 90 minutes, they would win this match 35 goals to zero. (laughs) They have the ability to absolutely blow them out of the water, but they're not going to do that. They're going to score a couple early. They're going to put in their backups, their backups to their backups, their fourth string, their fifth string. 
But to be honest, those guys are going to score too. So the angle I'm looking at here is France to have over four and a half goals team total, which is minus 135 on points bet. Not only is this game an opportunity for some of these star players like Mbappe, Nkunku, Giroud, and more to get out some frustrations, but it's a chance for some of these lower level guys, some of these backups on the bench for France to show some value and to get some valuable experience here. So I'm expecting an ugly, brutal, one-sided slaughter here, but France at four and a half team total surprisingly is a very playable line for me, Ian. Yeah, love that bet. Not going to discuss any more about that bet because we need to move on with the show. Plus, it may play a role in one of my <laughs> WTF bets later on in the show. Good hit, good hit. Like that one a lot. All right, here's my best bet. Number one for this weekend. I am also going to the UEFA European Championship qualifiers. I'm looking at the game between Norway and Scotland. Norway yes. plus 100 on points bet. Scotland plus 270 on points bet. My best bet for this one is the Buckets Classic. I'm looking at both teams to score here at minus 110 on points bet. I cannot wait for this game. Um, of course, I am biased towards Scotland. I grew up there. My mother is Scottish, in case you couldn't tell. My fucking accent is also Scottish. Well, sort of. Many people out there criticize my accent just a little bit. Bet you didn't know that, Buckets. Scotland, to back me up, I will bet that none of you knew this. After two match days, the games against Cyprus and the game against Giant Spain, Scotland are top of Group A in the qualifiers right now. Scotland have scored five goals and they have not not yet conceded a goal. Scott McTominay, if you're looking for an any time goal scorer, he's scored four of Scotland's five goals so far. So this is a cracking game with Steve Clark looking to have done a fabulous job already with the national team to continue this great job with Scotland, making them competitive once again. I want to see Scotland at a major championship, please. For the love of God, the last time Scotland competed in a major championship was way fucking back in 1998. I was actually there at the World Cup in France. Buckets wasn't even fucking born yet. But yes, 1998. So let's get Scotland back competitive again. I think they score in this game. They're taking on Norway, who are fourth in the group with only one point. They scored one goal and let in four goals already. They lost 3-0 at Spain. They got a 1-1 draw against Georgia. But they do have Erling Haaland. And even though he may still be completely wasted, still celebrating the Champions League victory with his good friend, um, of course, uh, Jack Grealish, he will be ready to go for this game because this guy's an absolute pro. He's a machine. And let's not forget, they've got some other guy called Martin Udegaard, who's not bad as well. Bad news, however, though, John Bucketsheimer, BTDS has only hit one time in the last six head-to-head -head games between these two teams all the way back to 2003. But the good news is the last time these two nations actually met, Erling Haaland was only 12 years old. So that was 10 years ago. Yes, I am right. Excited for this game. I think it's got a good shot. Your thoughts, Buckets? I like it a lot. And you touched on something very important there. When people look at head-to-head -head history, sometimes it doesn't matter. People will say, BTTS hasn't hit, and it's only hit once in the past 15 years. Holland didn't play. So it kind of voids all the games before Holland. And the one time he did play, they scored. So keep an eye on it. I actually almost had this as one of my best bets as well, Ian. I really like this look. Thanks, Buckets. I appreciate it. Can you uh, hurry the fuck up for Eric Gunnarsson and get the yeah, best bet yeah. number two? All right. This one is for Eric Gunnarsson and Eric Gunnarsson only. I am sticking with the Euro qualifier between Belgium and us. Austria, not Australia, Belgium and Austria. And if you remember Belgium during our World Cup segments, Ian and I talked about a few times how disappointing this team was. Everyone was hyping up the golden generation and talked about how good this team is with Courtois and with Lukaku and with KDB. And then they just did terrible. And I'm kind of banking on that as well here as a take on an Austrian side that is pretty good, currently leading the group, but is a team that is susceptible to dangerous uh, counterattacks specifically. This is a game where I really, really do like BTTS, but I actually got better value looking at over two and a half goals in this game. BTTS was minus 140, over two and a half goals was minus 110 over on points bet. So that's the angle I am taking here. Belgium has seen a little bit of a resurgence as former RB Leipzig manager Tedesco took over the squad. And since he took over, Belgium has scored three goals in both of their games that he has been in command. Meanwhile, Austria has scored three or more in their last five as well here. So I'm kind of just sitting back I don't know who's going to win this game. To be honest, I don't really care who wins this game. <laughs> give me goals in this one, Ian. 
Love it. Love the research. Great work. And I appreciate the determination to get this one right as well because there was a bit of heart and passion behind what you were saying right there. That's a good bet. Even though you almost said Australia, I like mm. the fact that you finally got Austria out of your mouth there. But good look here and certainly one that I will be tailing. Now, I'm going to apologize to our good friend Yoshi because um, my best bet number two may have a lot of teams in it. Uh, so <laughs> apologies to Yoshi for the next two bets that are actually taking place. Uh, Yoshi just left the building and then immediately walked back as soon as I mentioned his name because he's scared. He's like, fuck, I got work to do before I leave. Uh, best bet number two for myself is going back to Major League Soccer. I am looking at three games and all three games to have over one and a half total goals. NYCFC against Columbus, Sporting Kansas City against LAFC, and San Jose Earthquakes against the Portland Timbers. As I mentioned before, all three games over one and a half total goals at minus 125 on points bet. All games are taking place on Saturday night, and I'm going with the history books on this one. I know Bucket's mentioned to you, don't worry about the head-to-head. Sometimes it doesn't matter, and sometimes it does matter, but I'm simply just leaning on what I've learned through history with these two uh, great games, these three great games, but I'm looking forward to. So, MICFC against Columbus, over one and a half has hit in the last six meetings between the two clubs across all competitions. MICFC, they need to start winning games. Uh, Columbus, they're a solid team, but MICFC, my team, need to start winning games, and I'm always going to put a bit of money on my team to actually do well. I'd never bet against them. So, MICFC, they've only scored 17 goals this campaign. Columbus, they've scored an impressive 35 goals, and I just don't know if MICFC can stop Columbus from scoring. I hope they they score more goals than Columbus, but that one I expect BTTDS to hit there and certainly the over on one and a half total goals. Sporting KC against LAFC has hit in all 10 meetings between the two clubs across all competitions. Let me repeat myself. They have played against each other 10 times and this bet over one and a half total goals has hit all 10 times. Sporting KC just put four in at home against uh, Austin FC in their last home game, and LAFC lost by four in Houston on their last road game last week before then losing um, this last game, which killed Buckets' bet against Houston at home on Wednesday night. San Jose versus Portland, over one and a half has hit in the last 12 meetings between these two legendary clubs. They go back to the NASL days, these two clubs. Earthquakes, Portland Timbers, NASL, USL. I mean, these are legendary clubs that go back to the 70s when it comes to soccer. I love that. In fact, over one and a half has missed in five, and only five, from 34 meetings between these two clubs. Nice. That's insane. It's only missed five times from 34, which if my math, math serves me right, not the meth serves me right that's 29 <laughs> times this fucking bet is hit San Jose have failed to score at home in only one from eight games that they've played in Major League Soccer this campaign Timbers have only failed to score in three of their nine away games and they desperately need an away win excited for this bet buckets uh, over one and a half total it is a parlay uh, Yoshi's freaking out already what's your thoughts I love it it gives me flashbacks to our wonderful Bundesliga and Bundesliga 2 parlays that we put on that Ed bet Every single week, no matter what. And also, it's the MLS. So if you or if Hot Coco tell me to bet it, I'm just going to bet it. No questions asked. I challenged you, John Bucketsheimer, in episode number 70 to come up with something new, something different, something special, where we have never been before. Our followers, our loyal listeners, they like the weirdness of our show. We are a little weird, and I'm okay. I'm proud to be a little weird. But where the fuck are you going with this one? I want you to try to guess where I'm going based on the club names. You ready? Yep. All right, it is Mushuk Runa FC versus LDU Quito. Ian? I'm going for Finland. No. Where? We are going to the Ecuadorian Liga Pro Primera A, Ian, nice. for an Ecuadorian derby between <laughs> Mushuk Runa versus LDU Quito. <laughs> and Mushuk, as we all know, of course, Mushuk, that I'm probably saying wrong, so I apologize to our Ecuadorian viewers, are currently dead last on the table with an abysmal record of 3-3-8. Three, three, and eight. They also have the third most goals conceded with 23 goals allowed, and they've only scored 12 in their first 14 games. Meanwhile, their rivals LDU Quito are unbeaten in their last seven matches straight. And yes, they are coming off of back-to-back nil-nil games in international competitions. This is a team that historically 
shows the hell up when they play in this derby. If we look at the last two years that these two teams have placed, played five times total, BTTS has hit in four in the five, over two and a half has hit in three of the five, and all three of those matches, Quito covered the over by themselves. I am looking at that over two and a half goals currently at minus 135 on points bet because not only is this a derby with a bunch of history, this is a critical match for Quito to win because if Quito win, who are currently fourth on the table, they will jump past two of their rivals in the league, El Nacional and Barcelona SC to jump all the way to second in the Ecuadorian Premier League. Meanwhile, their rivals, Mushuk, in this match are pretty much almost done before they even started. They're not going to do anything great this year. There's not really a relegation thing going on right now, so they're not going to move up. They're not going to move down. They're just sitting complacent. And while they're want to, go, and while they're want to, ugh, while they will want to show up for this derby, I just don't see it happening. I'm expecting Keto to cover this over by themselves here, Ian. And it gives us something to watch at 7 p.m. Saturday night. Wow, buckets. I mean. I got to just ask the team one more time to put that graphic back up. If you're listening to the podcast, go check out the YouTube. Check the graphic out and the two logos of these badges. <laughs> Buckets, <laughs> one of the badges, it fucking looks like you. That looks like you on there. What is that? That is unbelievable. It's, it's me wearing like one of those gym pennies or whatever, like a fake jersey that you run around in when you're playing outside. Dude, that, that logo there's got a better tan than you have, man. I'm telling you that. Uh, that is brilliant, by the way. I love that one. Great bet. Great determination to find something that we have never produced before on our show. And this is the beauty of Stoppage Time Summer Special. We're going to go to countries that you may never have heard of, including John Bucket Timer. He never heard of Ecuador before this. <laughs> I mean, of course, he did through the World Cup, maybe. But his geography is not great. But I'm actually challenging him to learn more, and that's exactly what he's doing. This is a fabulous bet. I have no idea about it, but I'm absolutely going to tail it because when Bucket speaks... I bet. All right, let's get to my WTF bet for the weekend. It is, of course, once again, one I have to apologize to our good friend Yoshi for. It is going back to the UEFA European Championship qualifiers. And, of course, I'm looking at four games. Switzerland at Andorra. England at Malta. Kazakhstan at San Marino. And France at Gibraltar. My bet here is all four to be leading at half time. So I'm looking at Switzerland, England, Kazakhstan, and France to all have the lead on the money line at half time. It's plus 135 on points bet. Now, all of these games are taking place on Friday. So if you're listening to the show on Thursday night or Friday morning, don't waste time. Get this bet on as quickly as possible. This one, uh, I'm sure you're all thinking, what the fuck are you Exactly. This is a fun one. Switzerland at Andorra. Switzerland are top of Group I and have won both games, scoring eight goals and have not yet let a goal in. 5-0 and 3-0 in both of their games. They have won both first halves. England against Malta, top of Group C and have won both games so far, scoring four goals, 2-1 against Italy away from home. And of course, both of the, the goals that they scored in that game came in the first half. And then 2 0 against Ukraine, with also both goals coming in the first half. France against Gibraltar, top of Group B, and have won both games. Five goals and zero against for France. 4 0 against the Netherlands, where they scored three first half goals. And then they did win 1 0 against the Republic of Ireland, where the goal came a little bit later on in the second half. Now, this is where it gets interesting, where all of you say WTF, including John Bucket Seymour, where the fuck? is Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan <laughs> against San Marino. Kazakhstan, believe it or not, they're third in Group H. I am going for them because they just beat Denmark in the group. Wow. They just beat Denmark in the group. It was a comeback win after being down 2-0 at half time. But what a win that is. Plus, they're playing against San Marino, whose players, they all have jobs. They're part-time players. None of them are pro players. Um, so they lost also 2-0 in both games so far. And they're bottom of the group. That's, they always tend to be San Marino. So I am really excited about this one. As I mentioned before, all of these games taking place on Friday. So don't waste any time. As soon as you hear this bet, while I'm talking through this bet, place the bet. Because this one is going to hit on Friday. Buckets! I believe this one's going to hit on Friday. I'll be tailing it myself, and I'll be putting it in right after the show ends. And the main reason I'm going to tail it here, Ian, is because it goes kind of in the same mindset that my France bet goes in. Yep. When teams and countries are this heavy of a favorite, a lot of times they want to go up early and then rest. They want to get yes. that 2-0, 3-0 lead at halftime, take out all their stars, and then just kind of relax. So I expect first half, actually, 
to where we see a lot of these goals in these games specifically. So I love this look. I think first half money line is a better way of taking this than going for a full game money line or over goals or anything like that. I think this is a fantastic way to play some of these Euro qualifiers. Yes, sir. Episode number 71 in the books, Buckets. And this is one I will never forget. For the first time, and I've been trying to do this for a long time, I managed to convince my wife, Nicole, to be on a show with me. She said yes. She felt confident. She was a little nervous. But it was a great, great show and a great appearance from her. And as I mentioned before, if you want to see Hot Coco, a.k.a. my wife, back on the show, let us know. Drop in a comment. Let us know in the mentions. Uh, we love to hear from you if we should bring her back. And let us know what you think about more females getting into the gambling on soccer. Because we love placing wagers. It's what we do. We do it with a passion because it's just fun for us. It is an entertainment for us. It is for my wife, Nicole, as well. But I think more girls should be doing it. But Buckets, this is an episode I won't be forgetting for a very long time. I don't blame you, man. This was an incredible episode. And it's an episode that has me just a little bit worried because I'm afraid a bunch of these comments are going to be, hey, get Buckets out of there. Just bring Hot Cocoa on every week. Have it be a, you know, a joy show where they do it together. But I was honored to share the screen with her. Napoli for Life just mentioned something in our comments saying, get oh, his no. fucking massive forehead off the show. Big shout out to my wife, Nicole, for jumping on the casting couch with me today. It's stoppage time. It's been a great addition, episode number 71. Big shout out to my man and my co-host, John Bucketsheimer, for always bringing it. Every single week, I challenged him this week. I thought I'd catch him out, but he goes to Ecuador for a league we've never bet on before. So this is something pretty special. Hey, Buckets, uh, we'll come back next week. You want to do it again? Yeah. Might as well. We're going to be back on Tuesday next week ahead of the midweek games. We do have a full slate of Major League Soccer games coming on Wednesday. So, Buckets, we're going to go heavy on Major League Soccer next week. It will be a very heavy focused Major League Soccer show. We're going to discuss, obviously, some transfers coming into the league, transfer window open soon, transfers going out of the league. We're going to discuss who our favorites might be. We may look at a little future right now because it's very difficult to tell who's going to win Major League Soccer this year. And uh, we'll provide some best bets for Wednesday's slate of games. That sound good? That sounds good, Ian. And I'm going to tell you now, I will have an MLS parlay for Tuesday as well. I'm going to challenge myself today to really just dig into the MLS over the weekend and see if I can uh, copy what you do every week, it seems, on the show. Goddamn, I got to bring my wife on more often, putting pressure on you. You're starting to come up with parlays for Major League Soccer. I love it, Buckets. Hey, don't forget, at PointsBet, we got you covered. Uh, Download the app and bet with PointsBet. If you do have some winners, share them with us. Go on the website, state of the art on the the app. It's absolutely brilliant. Betting with PointsBet is a privilege, and it's a a lot of joy. It's easy to do so. So please, if you do, make sure you share your winners with us. And if you're not betting with PointsBet, make sure you do go ahead and do so if it's available to you. Buckets. Have a great weekend, man. I appreciate all the hard work and effort you put in. Uh, your name is getting bigger in this space, the media space. No longer do I hear John Bucket Timer as someone who's just a betting guy. People are now texting me and saying, Fuck, Buckets is getting good, man. That must make you feel good. Dude, that makes me feel better than you could ever know. Considering where I was a year ago, I've gone back and watched our very first show together, Ian, and I was not impressed at all with what I was doing. I was, first of all, I was just dripping. I mean, covered in sweat. Between every take, I was going, catching my breath and kind of figuring out what was going on. But we've come a long way together, and we're only going to keep improving. And I'm grateful for having people like you in my life that push me to be better. Just getting started, baby. Thanks, everybody. That was episode number 71 in the books. Make sure you, if you are watching or listening to the show, like, subscribe, comment, share the show as much as you possibly can. I know a lot of you, thousands out there, are enjoying watching the content and listening to the content. Share it with someone. That would mean a lot to us. And what I love more than anything else is the comments. Keep the comments coming in on the YouTube platform, on all of our podcast platforms. If it's just in our mentions on social media as well, slide into producer Rob's DMs, whatever it may be let us know what you think and feel about the show also let us know what you think about hot cocoa coming back on uh, sometime in the near future thanks everybody as always bet responsibly but most importantly make sure like i'm going to do with my wife tonight just make sure you absolutely have it